consent docket will end. We'll move right into the new business. Pay request number one for Marble Park bathroom. Emmett Construction has submitted pay request two for the amount of $42,994. Now, if you do not have that, those numbers on your uh, agenda tonight, but that'll be remedy for the Yes, ma'am. On the Marble Park, oh, Raven Martinez Parsons. Um, on the Marble Park thing, I just wanted to clarify again, who exactly owns the stadium? City. Okay, because that's what I do recall being told during some of these meetings. So I want, so my concern is why the county, well that county currently has USD 503 as the legal owners of the stadium inside of Marble Park. Ross, you have to help me on that one. I do not know. I don't that. believe they do. We had a lease with them at one time, but it has expired and it's never been renewed, although it's, I think we just kind of operate under the same general terms, you know, no rent payment or anything being exchanged. Just basically kind of set out who, who, who did maintenance and we've kind of always just adhere to that. Uh, I'm not sure what is on either. Are you talking the Registered Deeds Office or the Treasurer's Office? The Registered Deeds Office, the Fraser's Office. The Lebec County Courthouse has the Marble Park area. The whole Marble Park, it's kind of like it's the city of Parsons, except for the one little kind of rectangle area, which they currently have down on file as being owned by. Is that on the mapping? Because That is on their mapping and that is on their Registered Deeds. Here is the deed that started in 1970 where the city I believe there's deed. another deed that is deeded in fact. There has not been. So this is the registry from the register of deeds from the time that first one started in 1970 until today. Up okay. until, well actually up until, <coughs> it was up until last week. And nowhere during that time has the property ever been deeded back to the city of Parsons. <coughs> I'll have to look. It seems like I've looked this up before and there's a little wrinkle to all this but I, off the top of my head I, I, I can't tell you. I guess if I guess the school owns it. So, so <coughs> now I, there's a wrinkle to this, and I have to, to look into it because I've done it years ago when we were looking at the lease and things like that. Now, also on that. So uh, what I mean. Well, so what's the point? Well, the point is that the city's the one that's paying to insure it. The city's one paying to maintain it. The utilities on it. Um, if it's owned by USB 503, that would be the responsibility of USB 503 district to maintain and pay okay. utilities. All right, and got your point. So for the cost of the bathrooms as well, which was another point that the current 2015 appraisal value of the stadium is $55,000, $67,000 bathrooms. Is my understanding from talking to some people within, within the at the county um, is that was is not appropriate. Um, the most that was supposed to have been spent on that is $27,500 within a five-year period. Okay. And then also with that. That's not your point. That, that's, yeah. that's that part, that's, I think you're talking about on the floodplain right. permit, right. and that's not, that was just considered maintenance inside. That's not outside or changing the footprint, so that really doesn't apply. It, it was nothing you had to have a permit for on the modeling. It's maintenance bathrooms, redoing fixtures. It's not part of the floodplain permit. Okay. Um, and then it was pushed through rather quickly without, um, if I recall, that was not open up to be bidded out. Is that correct, uh, if I recall correctly? We took proposals. It did not okay. have a formal bid for the time frame, but we did take proposals. Because you wanted to get it done by the end of the... Yes. yes. Now I have a question because in 2014, uh, in February 2014, Mr. Grass had, um, had informed some people and, and he even made the comment in the newspaper as well. Um, where a steering committee prior to that time had been created, had already met several times, and part of the thing they had talked about was creating a plan for the re revitalization or the remodel of the restrooms at Force, or I mean at Marble Park. So that was in late 2013, early 2014. If that was under your radar at that point, and you had a committee that was spending time working on it, they were developing a 3D model at the time of it. What happened to that, that all of a sudden then, last minute it became a last minute issue that needed to be pushed through and we couldn't bid out? What happened to the year and a half between? Well, I can, I was part of that. I don't know if it was called a steering committee. I was uh, sat right here in this chair. And we met on it and Fred had a, uh, some ideas on revitalizing the the grandstands and 
it was very aggressive. It was a seven hundred thousand dollar proposition. So uh, we had discussed ways for funding, fundraising. It was all going to be uh, done with funds uh, by donations. Donations. Uh, it was. Uh, well, we didn't decide anything at that point. We just, we, we just discussed. But that's my, that's my point, is the fact that it, it wasn't a, this comes up last minute, and, oh boy, we gotta jump on this, and we gotta push it through, so we can't open it up for bids, which is our policy in the city. It was pushed through as a last minute, oh, we really have to do this when it's been under your radar. You guys was talking about it. There was discussion about what had to happen, what needed to take place. It well, it was, a, it was a discussion, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it a pie in the sky type of discussion. It was, uh, like I said, it was very expensive and, and uh, uh, but Fred then uh, had uh, reasons that uh, were bought beyond his control that it just kind of took a backseat to other items that were going on. So it, it got dropped. So can I, can I ask a question? Sure. Is what we're considering now uh, whether or not we approve and authorize a payment to him in construction, or are we trying to prosecute something that may have gotten twisted up somewhere in the past two or three years? I would just like for clarification on what the situation is, because if the situation is as well, uh, then my research, and I have found that it, it is indeed owned by USB 503, then I have concerns about who should be paying the bill on restoring the bathroom. So I'm not, as you might want to try to twist it around, and you want to keep trying to tell us to stop talking or telling us all kinds of stuff. Um, so that, 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 that's fine. I'm making a point that well, has to do exactly with the point, the agenda. If I may, uh, Icon also said on the steering committee, and I guess that's probably the best term you could use on that. And we did meet several times. Uh, and as, as the mayor said, it was going to be seven hundred, seven hundred fifty thousand dollars project. Uh, back to kind of what Daryl also said uh, about the amount of money that was spent on that. Any time that you change the footprint, expand, do anything to it, then what you're talking about comes into it. This committee sat down, and all this was going to do is to see how we could do fundraising and things like that to bring what we thought was a part of the jewel of this community up to a good standard. What we were trying to do as a committee to do the fundraising and private funds and things like that, how we could do that without any cost to the city. Uh, but there was some but there, there was some small there were some small engineering fees and things like that and, and there, there was some plans actually drew up <coughs> for that. Uh, and it was it was pretty extensive. Um, but it dealt with structural yeah. items uh, to take it out of the floodplain. Right. Uh, now, did so it, didn't the plans include also, I, from what I read, it also included a plan for, uh, what is it, renovating the bathroom? Or rehab? Uh, renovating that, the locker rooms and everything. Uh, it, the, the plan itself, kind of like what Mayor said, was, was going to be was not only going to change the footprint, but it was going to raise the whole level of, of, of the bathrooms and everything else, storage, <coughs> locker rooms and everything, uh, in probably, I think, in excess of four and a half to five feet. So it was it was very extensive as to how we could take it out of its left lane and raise it up and all that. And it just, kind of like the uh, mayor said, it just kind of went away. Uh, it, it, the, it resurfaced back as to, you know, it's been way too long, and that's kind of how it went today, or this year. Uh, let's try to get it done and everything else. That's a buy in the sky, as you termed it. It wasn't gonna happen. Bathrooms needed done, so that's kind of where we're at today, right? That's kind of how Well, I'm, I'm, I've heard yeah. nothing but great things about the, the remodel yeah. of the bathrooms, and that they, they look great, no doubt. I just would like to have things kind of clarified and then I mean if, if there was any kind of cost you know towards engineering plans on it previously on rehabbing the bathrooms that fact that we paid cost once again repaid cost more cost a year later for somebody else to come in and, and yeah. engineering yeah. plans we on that. Yeah the, 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 the plan we didn't engineer we didn't 
the engineering part itself was just the footprint. It didn't have any specifics. And this was, I think most of that, as far as the plan goes, most of that was even donated. Yeah. And if I remember right, I think it was done by uh, Terry Hardman from Landmark Engineering. Uh, he decided to come on. That was part of that. Everybody getting together as a committee. Who can we pull in? And then the ideas. And, and that was drew up. Specific to the bathrooms, the locker rooms. It wasn't that specific. The plans were just uh, one-sided, top view, how we would do it, ramps on both sides. I mean, it was pretty extensive. There's probably plans around that floating around. So I think I even got some somewhere. But uh, nothing was specific to what was going to be done to the bathrooms as far as cost and stuff like that. So that's what we there was an that. estimate. I mean, yeah. a, a general estimate. Yeah. Most of that work, most of that estimate dealt with what do we have to do to bring this out of the flood point? That's where most of the energy was focused. Was focused and on. There was okay on that. Back on the other, on the first one, there was no plans drawn up. There was a concept drawn up. No plans, okay. no okay. stamps, no plans. Plans may have been a wrong. Concept. Yeah. It's in the stadiums in the floodway. That's the main thing. It's always going to be in the floodway unless you elevate. No matter what we do, it's going to be in the floodway. <coughs> on that, the, the, the concept was drawn up. The way it stands right now, I don't know about the deed and all that stuff. That's a Ross question. The city takes care of the maintenance on the bathrooms. The school takes care of the locker rooms and the inside of the stadium. The college has an area they store stuff in, the police department, public works, and the school, we all kind of share it in storage. So the bathrooms is kind of the city's maintenance. We went in, we want you know, we've had a lot of complaints on them. We tried to look at ways to fix them up, redo them. There was no plans drawn on this. It was kind of designed just how to remodel, fix it up. It was just a remodel. Instead of putting shower curtains on the women's stalls, how to put doors on, how to cover it up, how to cover some of the piping up. That's just, just as simple as it was. We just took proposals and that's, it was just a maintenance item, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, it did it did fall off the radar for a while. Football season coming in. <laughs> Frank, my next question on that. Is, was this done? Is this backflow both ways? Back. Sewage? No, it's got backflow for it. No, it just goes. It's in, in both ways. Backflow. In and out. No, so they were redone. Just out. And all electric, all electric brought up above floodplain. No. Well, I think if you check regulations, so if you redo things, it has to be according to. Regulation on there was no electrical work done. We just worked on the structure. It was no, it was not redone. Putting it doors on the toilets and yeah. uh, fixing the plumbing, painting it up, making it look less embarrassing than what it is. That was the objective. That's it. Anything 